the wings of your dreams. Mr. Ikeda's encouragement for the future division. Dreams are the privilege of youth one. Illustrated by Mitsuko Motomura. Mr. Ikeda, thank you for beginning this new dialogue series for the future division. Our members have been eagerly looking forward to it. I'm willing to do anything for our future division members. Their development is my greatest hope. Now let's begin. This year's series is titled On the Wings of Your Dreams and will focus on various jobs and professions. What a fine idea. That is a very important topic. A youth spent challenging oneself towards realizing a dream, such as a particular job or profession, shines brilliantly like the spring sun. I'm looking forward to hearing about everyone's dreams. My mentor, Seken Sokagakai President Jose Toda, used to say, Young people should cherish dreams that seem almost too big to accomplish. Dreams are like wings. They enable us to soar freely anywhere around the world. Dreams serve as a switch that activates our hidden strengths. Dreams are also like a beacon lighting the way ahead, even through the darkness of difficulties. Dreams are the privilege of youth. As long as we continue to pursue our dreams, we can keep growing forever. Of course, dreams are called dreams because they haven't come true yet. To make them a reality, we have to make genuine efforts. Perhaps some of you find it hard to have a dream. There's no need to be impatient. The important thing is to tackle each challenge in front of you one at a time with all your might. By doing so, you are certain to discover your own unique dream. At the Future Division Summer Training Courses held annually in Japan, participants enjoy hearing from members of other divisions who talk about their time in the Future Division as well as their ups and downs at their current jobs and professions. After the recent course, some Future Division members shared their impressions, saying that they renewed their dream of studying abroad, which they had given up on, and that they vowed to learn English in order to communicate with people around the world. Others said that they were able to change their expectations about working, that they had greater hope for the future, and that they were resolved to realize their dreams. I would like to take this opportunity to thank all those who are supporting and encouraging our future division members. There are many kinds of jobs and professions in society. Just looking at the objects around you gives you an idea of the various jobs involved to produce them. Take a piece of clothing, for example. Someone produced the original fiber, others made it into cloth, and still others designed the clothing. Then, someone sewed it together, someone delivered the finished item to the shop, and someone sold it. If any one of these jobs didn't exist, we wouldn't have anything to wear. With any job, it's not always fun. Every job requires effort, but through our work, we can uplift others as well as ourselves. Work can be a source of joy that creates happiness for us and others. One interpretation of the Japanese verb for to work is that it means to bring ease to those around you. There is joy and pride in serving others. The Chinese character for hataraku is written with two elements, one meaning person and the other meaning to take action. It is especially noble to work for the happiness and welfare of those who are struggling or suffering. That is why I can declare that all your fellow SGI members who are supporting you and taking action to help others become happy and build a better world, including many of your parents and relatives, are so admirable. Some future division members find it hard to maintain their dreams because they give up before they even try to realize them, thinking that it will be too difficult and they won't succeed. Because of the abundance of information available to us today, it can be easy to overthink things without ever taking action. But the fact is, you never know what you can do until you try. When I was young, an older person I respected said to me, Whatever happens, youth is a time to challenge yourself courageously with the spirit. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. 
I still recall these words. Just remember that even if you lack self-confidence, I have faith in you. I believe in your unlimited potential. I believe in your dauntless courage. Instead of looking for reasons you might fail, it's far better to decide that you can succeed and make the effort to do so. You may face many difficulties, but the joy you feel when you succeed will be all the more special. Even if you don't achieve the result you wanted, the effort you exert is certain to pay off and open a bright new path forward. You are all young. Youth is life's greatest treasure, more valuable than any prized possession. So even if you fail, don't let it get you down. Just stay positive and keep trying. The environmental activist Dr. Wangari Maathai is an example of someone who faced many challenges in her pursuit of learning and was able to open the way to realizing her mission in life. She adopted the Japanese phrase motainai to express a spirit of respect for nature and not wasting the planet's precious resources. I had the opportunity to meet and have a dialogue with her for about an hour in February 2005 at the Seikyo Shinbun Building in Shinanomachi, Tokyo. The memory of her bright sun-like smile and her compassion and warmth for humanity lives on in my heart. Dr. Maathai was born in Kenya. After studying in the United States, she earned her doctorate from the University of Nairobi. She founded the Green Belt Movement, an initiative that has planted trees throughout Kenya and other parts of Africa while empowering communities, especially women, to conserve the environment and improve their livelihoods. She also fought against the dictatorship ruling her country and was arrested and jailed. In 2004, she became the first African woman to be awarded the Nobel Peace Prize for her contribution to sustainable development, democracy and peace. By that time, which was 30 years after Dr. Maathai had initiated the tree planting movement, some 30 million trees had been planted. Planting trees may seem like a modest act, but the accumulation of such continuous efforts inspired people around the world. Dr. Maathai, a person of action and conviction, said that she knew that the little they were doing was making a positive impact and that if they could multiply that several million times, they could definitely change the world. Her invincible spirit was nurtured by her efforts from childhood to study while working. Dr. Maathai grew up in Kenya at a time when it was believed that women did not need an education. But while helping in the fields and around the house, she maintained a powerful desire to learn. After graduating from junior high school, she entered a girls' boarding school where she learned something very important from her teachers: to believe that society is inherently good and that people generally act for the best. I strongly and deeply agree with this spirit. No matter what tragic events occur or how bleak things become, We can definitely create a better world and future. Nichiren Daishonin writes, "There are not two lands, pure or impure in themselves. The difference lies solely in the good or evil of our minds. The endeavor to make society and the future brighter, more joyful and brim with hope begins in our own hearts and minds. Believing in the future and in her own potential, Dr. Maathai challenged every difficulty she faced. Because her spirit was not defeated, she was able to triumph in society and positively impact the world. All the first-rate people I have encountered around the world have been champions of unflagging optimism. They believed that no matter what their circumstances or environment, they could overcome any obstacle and transform the situation, and they gave their all to make that happen. They continued to act based on the conviction that the world would become a better place. You, my young friends, are practicing Nichiren Buddhism and causing the sun of hope to rise in your hearts by chanting Nam Myo Ho Renge Kyo. Please believe that you can absolutely open the stage of your mission upon which you can freely manifest your potential and that your future extends endlessly before you. When you were young, Mr. Ikeda and Mr. Toda's businesses were in crisis. You fought your hardest, focusing on a brighter future. 
What were your feelings as you threw yourself into your work at that time? Simply that I was utterly committed to Mr. Toda. At the time, I was suffering from tuberculosis and my doctor had said I probably wouldn't live to the age of 30. But when I resolved to devote myself to supporting my mentor and chanted earnestly while continuing to work, I felt courage, hope, wisdom, strength and life force well up within me and I was able to make a major breakthrough. When I began working at Mr. Toda's publishing company and was put in charge of editing a children's magazine, I was overjoyed to be able to fulfill my childhood dream of becoming a journalist who communicated the truth and imparted courage. In the difficult times following World War II, however, Mr. Toda's businesses began to fail and I had to take on an entirely different job one that I did not feel suited for, but I made a decision. Whatever my job, as someone embracing the world's foremost philosophy and receiving training from the world's foremost mentor, I would produce outstanding results. I determined that I would make Mr. Toda the best mentor in the world, known to all. I worked and studied fiercely every day, I took Mr. Toda's dreams as my own and I realized each of them one after another. This is my greatest honor. Nichiren Daishonin writes, Regard your service to your Lord as the practice of the Lotus Sutra. In other words, he is encouraging us to regard our work as part of our Buddhist practice. These immortal words have served as a guideline inspiring your fellow members who are giving their all in society today, praying for the successful development of society and their workplaces, they are determined to make where they are the stage of their mission, to carry out their human revolution and to demonstrate the validity of Nichiren Buddhism. Their invincible spirit has won them the admiration and trust of leaders in the business world and other fields. People who have a dream and who work, study and exert themselves with all their might are already victors. Regardless of what others say, I am certain you will achieve wonderful victory in the future. With hopes for your successful endeavors, I join our fellow members in Japan and around the world in looking forward with great anticipation to your growth. From SGI Newsletter number 9919